welcome back to our next episode of What's Up Prof. Good day, Walter. Good day. Today I'm chilly and I have a, what the English call a jersey, I'll, on to keep the cold out. I'll brace myself and try and get through this with just my shirt today. Will you open up for us with the prayer, please? Absolutely. Heavenly Father, we are dealing with very serious issues and we need heavenly enlightenment. And I pray that you will guide our thoughts and help us to find the truth in the maze of lies that exist in the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. In the previous episode, you mentioned that we will be going into discussions about the King of the North and city, get out of the cities, etc. But there's also some other interesting things that you've mentioned that you would like to talk about. How did these ideas come to you? And maybe you can give us an introduction of what we're going to be talking about in the next lecture or so. Well, it's going to be more than one. Yes. Because this is quite a, a big topic. And I see you've uh, curtailed my movement here because I was swinging around <laughs> on this chair. Yeah, we're looking like uh, merry-go-round. <laughs> Kids playing on the merry-go-round, <laughs> going backwards and forwards. And yeah, so uh, I see my movement has been restricted. But OK, I hope my, the talking has not been restricted. We've titled it Conspiracy, Conspiracy Theories with a big question mark. Now, this is always a, a hot topic, right? Mm. <laughs> So I'm wondering whether some, uh, what do they say in the movies, if certain people are not to watch or certain aid clauses? Parental it, guidance. Parental guidance or something like that. Yes. Well, perhaps, uh, you know, very sensitive people or people that cannot think outside of the box should rather tune out. Yes. Because they could become confused or maybe upset and maybe start writing articles and things like that. So. Let's. Uh, That's a disclaimer that you've just. It's just given. a disclaimer. Yes, okay. it's better not to watch. <laughs> <laughs> so all sensitive people, please take it with. Uh, yes, for whatever. what it's worth. For what it's worth, yes. Okay, so. Well, get us into how you got the. What is the method behind all of this? How it, how does it get together? There are so many links. There are so many things that happen in the world that seem to be disjointed. Something happening over here, something happening over there. And is it now truth or is it a conspiracy theory? How does it fit into the pattern? Now, we've already in the past said we apply a filter, right? Mm -hmm. And that filter is the Word of God given through the Bible and through His prophets. So how do, we, how do we connect the dots and where are we going? I believe and I think you believe that the time is short. We are living in the last days and we are slowly reaching a climax. And we know from scripture that the climax will not be a pretty sight. Yes. Uh, if you take, uh, for example, just the destruction of Jerusalem which serves as a type for the destruction of the world, then we have to know that issues are very, very serious. Now, I have to ask myself the question, what were conditions like in the antediluvian world that God would come to the, the realization that this whole structure has to be destroyed. Yes. Why would God get to the point where he can destroy virtually all of humanity? Uh, it must be pretty serious, mm. right? Correct. Now, is he a tyrant? Is he a monster that wants to enforce his will, my way or the highway? Or what is, what is the real issue? Mm. Now we know what the character of God is because we've seen it in the Bible, right? Yes. Jesus portrays the character of God to us. And, 
when I, when I study the Bible and I see the contrast between the rigid mode of the, the scribes and the Pharisees and the mode of, of activity and thinking of Jesus, then the choice is clear. Mm. They had so many restrictions, so many rules, so many, they, they were control freaks to the power of 10. Yes. And Jesus ignored their directives that were contrary to the word of God, but perfectly suited to control and power mongering. Mm. And if I look at the two, and I, I, I look at my own spirit, how I, even as a child, used to rebel against this authoritarian mode of thinking, uh, then I'm attracted <laughs> to one side rather than the other side. And uh, not that God doesn't have rules. He does have rules. But his, his whole methodology is to show you why his rules are absolutely logical and why they are essential. He never says to you, Perinde Kadava, be like a corpse and mm -hmm. obey me. He says, come, let us reason together. And we have the, these conflicting modes of control. Yes. The one mode of control that God exerts is by appealing to your intellect and appealing to your heart and bringing the intellect and the heart together into harmony with his will, which is perfect once you have studied it. And the other one is a, is a coercion. You will do it my way or the highway. And now when we look at conspiracy theories, we see that many, many things are decided behind the scenes. Yes. Well, just go to the Bible. Jesus says, I have done nothing in secret. secret. Mm. If you want to know what I stand for, ask these. I said it publicly. Nothing is secret. Yes. So anything that is secret is conspiratorial. If you could take in contrast the way the Pharisees decided about his putting him to death, everything was done in secret. Yes. There's a whole conspiracy theory going just on there. His trial, everything. Now ask yourself a question. When you go through history and you look at the modus operandi of Satan, he would try and control you, mm -hmm. try and make you do it his way, force you. Uh, would he coerce? Yes. Absolutely. If you didn't comply, would he be inquisitorial? Yes. Yes. And if you then still didn't comply, would he burn you at the stake? Yes. Absolutely. So this is his mindset. And this is the mindset that you find in the world out there. And when you come across that mindset, you know who's behind that mindset. Any form of controlling the world, any form of coercion is not from God. Correct. God always appeals to your intellect and to your conscience. Mm -hmm. and, and so when we're going to discuss these conspiracy theories, we we'll see what the real agenda is. And we will also have to look at what God's response is going to be. So does Satan want the whole of humanity in his camp? Yes. Will there be a little Mordecai in the gate that irritates him? Yes. Will he try eventually to obliterate that? Yes. Any mode of thinking, I mean, we discussed that, what the hierarchy says of the Roman Catholic Church. Correct has to be accepted and you have to give up your freedom of yes. choice. We read the Jesuit yeah. documents, you have to give up your freedom of choice and you have to accept it that way because it's their way or the highway, yeah. right? So that's definitely not from God. No, it's definitely That's what not. I just wanted to say. God always fights for your freedom of choice. Does the Bible tell us that uh, this conflict will escalate towards the end? Yes. Will there be an attempt at obliterating those that don't go along with the agenda? Mm -hmm. 
And uh, where do you expect the greatest opposition? Uh, in countries that have become used to thinking in the robotic fashion of their leaders? I mean, I'm always surprised when I look at uh, people that are virtually brainwashed. When you look at, for example, military exercises, I mean, these authoritarian regimes love to display their military. I mean, they are just so spot on and they, they all exactly the same. And yes, when this one says A, then they shout A and there's no mind of their own anymore. It's unbelievable. And this is the way in which he's heading. And we have a time frame because we are heading towards the climax of the ages and we are supposed to watch the signs. So we're going to look at some very strange web pages which might be disturbing to some people. Mm -hmm. But we have to look at how they fit into the prophetic scenario. Now, some of these might seem to come from conspiracy pages, but some of them are actually official government pages mm. and very high official organizations that basically run the world. And we will be surprised that uh, reality is more stunning than fiction. Mm. And uh, that's when it gets scary. That's when it gets so scary. So shall we jump into it? Let's get into it. We did give a disclaimer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe I can also add, an add on the disclaimer. Some people might think we're fear mongering. Yes. But we're actually trying to make s to get sense that people can also maybe think about how things link together. How they link together. Because if you're in the know of you seeing these things, then you're not scared. Yes. You're only scared of the unknown. And, and this is another point. Does the Bible tell us that we are fighting a war against spiritual forces? Yes. It does, right? Yeah. So will the occult world sort of come into the scenario? Definitely. Will uh, communications with demons perhaps be part of the issue? Definitely. Uh, do world leaders actually communicate with demons? Yes. Absolutely. We've shown videos in yes. the past of, of communications between the highest politicians and the so-called deceased, which are demons because they, the deceased know nothing, right? Correct. So uh, there are many issues that will come in here, which to some people are, whoa, this, this, this can't be real. Mm. When I just think back, let's say, Roger Morneau and journey into the supernatural, to many people, that is an unreal world. But I actually was involved in that world mm. and it's not unreal. I actually communicated in my past experience with demons, mm -hmm. directly. Directly, I know what it is like. And someone who has grown up in, in a little bubble, protected from all of these things, would think, whoa, this is not part of reality. This is reality. Yes. When you are in a session where you're actually communicating with demons, that is a reality. And it cannot be, cannot be denied. So let's jump right into it. There's a web page and it's a very interesting web page. It is deagle.com. Now, it's not a government web page, but it is a real intelligence organization for the United States government. And it makes some very strange predictions. Mm. Uh, it was actually used in the WikiLeaks issue and governments have used it in the past to uh, actually, you know, determine some of the issues that surround uh, developments in the world. Now here's a, a web page that is not legal. It's uh, steamit.com and they're asking the question here, what is this global depopulation by 2025? Mm. Interesting year. Now we're not setting a date, no. we're just quoting a web page. And we will go to Deagle and see what they actually have to say. Here's a, 
a, a blog page, Algora blog, which talks about these issues. And of course, they are linking depopulation now with the Bill Gates plan. And they have, you know, very interesting things here that are quite sensational. The depopulation agenda, Bill Gates plans to kill you. That's, of course, ridiculous. One man is not behind uh, a huge plan like this. And if there is a plan like that, if it exists at all, then there must be other powers behind it, right? Correct. He won't be alone. So they also quote Deagle and says it makes this mysterious changes to the 2025 population forecast. Uh, yeah, they continue and they talk about the development of a universal vaccine and that this is going to be one of the means to bring about this depopulation. But, uh, you know, if something is so in your face, then that's what people want you to believe. But behind it, there might be a deeper issue. Mm. And we want to study the deeper issue. The devil also wants to prepare the world for what is coming. Yes. Is the devil a student of scripture? Yes. And he will appear as an angel of light. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't mean he's coming as a demon. Okay, so if he has a good idea of where we are in the stream of time, and if he knows what the boundaries are where God will not allow uh, mankind to go any further. I mean, there is such a boundary. It existed in the flood. Yes. And it existed at Sodom and it ex existed at Gomorrah, right? Yes. There's a point. And there's also a point where nations may not exceed a certain bound. Then they will be removed. Correct. So he knows the agenda. And knowing the agenda, perhaps he even has a much better idea of the time frame than we have. Mm -hmm. So what if he can be predictive? Exactly. That would be interesting. Yes. Okay. So here this web page tells us what Deagle's sources are, and they believe that these are the deep state sources, of course. This comes from Deagle itself, sources US Department of Defense, Department of the State, the CIA, World Bank, European Union, and United States Coast Guard, Department of Defense, Government, Air Force, Army, Marine Corps, Navy. Uh, those are the sources that they use. And uh, it's very interesting. So this man claims that these are deep state sources. So let's go to those web pages yes. we'll and just see it. what they have to say. Deagle.com, he has a partial list of known Deagle partners and clients according to their own website. National Security Agency, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, Organizations for Economic Cooperation and Development, uh, OSCE, Russian Defense Procurement Agency, Stratfor, the World Bank, you know, it's pretty impressive, right? Mm. Yes. A pretty impressive list. And it's interesting that this web page doesn't have an About Us section. Yeah. They don't tell you. It's not easy to see. Yeah. Who are the but WikiLeaks was involved in it. Governments have used it. And not many people know about it, no. but it's out there, right? Uh, fascinating. Uh, this comes directly from their own web page and they are going to explain here why they have this massive prediction of a population reduction. We'll look at it, at it in a moment. And it's a long story and they're saying, well, it's not necessarily war. It could just be migration. Mm. It could be changes in the economy and, of course, the epidemics yes. that could lead to things like this. So let's just read some of the things that they say here, where, why they have these predictions. There have been many questions about the country's forecast, especially the ones focusing on the United States of America. They won't be answered one by one. But below you can find some explanations, thoughts and reflections. We are going to keep this as short as possible. 
The majority of the economic and demographic data used in the making of the forecast is widely available by institutions such as the CIA, IMF, the United Nations, USG, etc. So they say that themselves. Mm -hmm. So here in this first paragraph, they say that pandemics will play a major role in the reduction of the populations. And then the collapse of the Western financial system will wipe out the standard of living of its population while ending posi schemes such as the stock exchange and the pension funds. The population will be hit so badly by a full array of bubble and posi schemes that the migration engine will start to work in reverse, accelerating itself due to ripple effects, thus leading to the demise of the states. So they're predicting virtually a wipeout, right? Yeah. People migrating out of the United States again. Okay, but the time frame is so fascinating. So sorry to disappoint many of you with our forecast. It is getting worse and worse every year since the beginning of the pre-crisis in 2007. And uh, they're not going to say anything else about it. Mm. Now here, here is a very interesting sentence. It says, the figure itself is not important. What is relevant is the fact that the scenario can evolve beyond the initial conditions from a 50% death toll to more than 90%. That's interesting, wiping out 90%. Mm. By the way, no pandemic or nuclear war is included in the forecast. They're talking about a pandemic here. Yeah. But in this forecast, in this case, no pandemic or nuclear war is in the forecast. So what will wipe out those populations? I don't know. Uh -huh. Now this is where it gets interesting. This is where we have to put on our thinking caps. Yes. Now let's take a country like India, for example. This is very interesting. They have here India, what the currency is, and the year of assessment of their population in this table here is 2017. The population was 1.3 billion. And then it tells you uh, what its gross domestic product is and all of these issues. Now, it's interesting the gross domestic product was 2.4 trillion. Yes. Then they have a forecast for 2025. The population, they say, is going to increase. It's a green arrow. And it's still going to be 1.3 billion, but the numbers will have increased. So obviously, issues like pandemics or nuclear war didn't affect them and at the migration. All. Migration, nothing. The gross domestic product is going to be 5.1 trillion when it was before 2.4 trillion. In other words, it's going to more than double. That's astounding. Mm -hmm. And that's from 2017 to 2025. We don't see anything like that at, at the moment. Yep. Nothing like it. Now, that's very interesting. All right. But it gets fascinating when we get to the others. Let's take Germany. That's a Western country. Yes. It's a Christian country, right? Correct. And the previous one was not a Christian country. The year 2017, the population 81 million. These are just facts. Then the gross domestic product 3.7 trillion at the moment. That is more than what India's was, right? Yes. Then it goes down and it tells you the forecast for 2025 and the arrow is red, the population is going to drop to 28 million. Excuse me, this is the forecast. Yep. From 81 million to 28 million. Now if they don't include pen demics and nuclear wars in this. Then what's going to happen to Germany? Why would they say that? 
why would there be virtually an 80% reduction in population? Are they all going to emigrate? Are they all going to become Russians? Are they going to emigrate to North America? No, no. because they're going to go down as well, maybe to North Africa. <laughs> I don't know. But it's fascinating that they will have a total population collapse mm. or destruction, according to their estimate. Yes. And their gross domestic product will drop down to 621 billion from a mighty 3.7 trillion. In other words, their total economy is going to be destroyed. Mm. This sounds like national ruin. Yeah. Have you heard that word before? Yes. I wonder who used the word national ruin? A prophet. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, this is very serious. And uh, people will say conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is a, a statistical forecast from Deagle. For whatever reason, yes. they don't really say, right? Let's look at Italy. Again, the population in 2017, 62 million. They're going to experience a drop to 44 million. Not as bad as Germany, no. but it's still a considerable calamity if uh, 20 million people disappear from your population. Yes. That, that is a horrendous disaster. Definitely. And their gross domestic product is going to drop down from 1.9 trillion to 1.3 trillion. So they're not as badly hit as Germany, according to this. Yes. Why could this be? Doesn't that make you think? Yeah, you've all. It's interesting, you have to start thinking. Let's go to another non-Christian country, Japan. Gross domestic product, 4.9 trillion. Population, 126 million. Let's drop down to the forecast. Population, 103 million. So they're going to lose 23 million people in their population. That's a lot. That's a lot of people, yes. That's a lot of people. 23 million people gone within the next five years, according to them. Yeah. Not because of war, no. not taken into account. And then you go down to the gross domestic product, which will drop from 4.9 trillion to 3.1 trillion. So it's not as bad as Germany, which is totally yeah, obliterated, obliterated, according to their statistics. It's still bad. Russia. In 2017, the population 142 million. The forecast for 2025, 142 million. No reduction in population. Mm -mm. Nothing. What do these people know that we don't know? I don't know. Or maybe do know? Yes. Okay. What, what about domestic gross product? domestic product? It was 1.6 trillion in 2017, and it's going to go up to 4.3 trillion. Yes. So it's going to triple, mm -hmm. at least. This is astounding. This is astounding. Spain, yeah. a Catholic country yes. in Europe. And uh, what do we have here? 49 million people in the country. 2017, gross domestic product, 1.3 trillion. Population reduction down to 28 million. That's almost slightly, half. almost half the population yeah. is going to be wiped out, according mm -hmm. to this, mm -hmm. within the next five years, for whatever reason. Yes. And the gross domestic product will also drop substantially to 553 billion, whereas at the moment it's 1.3 trillion. Yes. Israel. Because there are people that say, uh, the Zionists are behind this. Mm -hmm. It's a Zionist plot to wipe out the population. So I, I included Israel just for interest's sake as to what is happening there. 
8.3 million is the population in 2017, or was the population, and it is going to drop to 4 million, so they're going mm -hmm. to lose more than half their population. Yes. That's quite fascinating. Their gross domestic product is going to drop substantially from 348 billion to 70 billion. Yes. So Israel is going to be very hard hit. France, what's going to happen to you? Population 67 million in 2017, down to 39 million. It's also That's significant. That's very significant. Now, always bear in mind, India and Russia, mm -hmm. no population drop. Now let's go to Canada. Mm -hmm. Population, 36 million. Gross domestic product, 1.6 trillion. Their forecast for 2025, 26 million. They're going to lose 10, 10 million, million people. Yeah. That's a third of their population, gone. Gone. That's incredible. This is just a forecast, of course. Yes. Now, what do they know that the world apparently does not know? And if they know, what is their source? Yes. Where does this all come from? Where, Where does, does this, this info come from? Come from? So, gross domestic product will also drop. South Africa, just for interest's sake, 55 million, the population will drop to 46 million, so it's a 9 million drop in population, which is substantial. I mean, if we had to say in the next uh, five years, 10 million people are going to die, that's quite shocking. And that must also then include births and deaths. Yes. So you're, with all of that, it Correct. still goes down 9 million. But when you say to Germany, 50 million of your population yeah. are going to die out of your 80 something million, that is That's shocking yes. beyond measure. Now let's look at the poor United States of America. Population 327 million in 2017, they predict it's going to drop to 100 million. million. Now that's... That's a so what's going to happen to 227 million people? Migrate? To two thirds of the population. Gone. Are they all going to move to Mexico? I don't know. This I, is what that they, makes uh, no, no sense. They, this what is what they're so trying yeah. to tell you, but... Are they going to move to Canada? No, because Canada is also... It's also got a drop. Yeah. So they're definitely not moving anywhere. No. All right? And it's not a pandemic and it's not a war according to them. And their gross domestic product is going to drop down to 2.4 trillion mm. from a mighty 19. 19 trillion. They're going to be a third world country yes. in the next five, five years. Well, it's four years now. Yeah. Because this one's nearly gone. It's basically. Can you see it happening? Now let's look at the poor United Kingdom. This is unbelievable. Population currently 66 million, or it was in 2017. Mm -hmm. It's going to drop to 15 million. Yeah. 51 million people of their population are predicted to be gone. They're not moving to Europe. No. Because Europe is going, going down. down. As well. I don't know what they're going to do. And then Russia the population basically stood at the same. This, so is, this is almost the worst of them. This is horrendous. Yeah. This is horrendous. What do these people know? Well, here's just a, a broader summary. Let's have a look at China, for example. The population in 2017 was 1.38 billion. And they predict a drop to 1.358 billion, which is not a great drop compared to that huge number. Yes. But their gross domestic product is going to increase from 11.94 
trillion to 16.967. So they will be the mightiest nation in terms of gross domestic product and population yes. in the next four years. Brazil is going to have an increase of three million. So the Americans certainly didn't migrate. Those yeah. 250 million, million people didn't migrate to Brazil. South America, yeah. right? Not according to this. Mexico, their population is going to stay exactly the same, virtually. It's going to have a slight increase. Yeah. So they didn't go to Mexico either. No. And they didn't go to Canada. No. So the only other conclusion must be that they no longer exist. Now, if I were to tell you that in the next four years, virtually the entire population of the United States, except for a handful, will be obliterated, would that shock you? Of course. And if I told you that virtually 80% of the population of Germany will be obliterated, would that shock you? Yes. Would you book your aeroplane ticket to go there? No. <laughs> No. It's shocking. Definitely not. Okay, let's just take a step back. People will accuse us now of fear-mongering. Fear we weren't fear-mongering. We were reading statistics, right? Mm -hmm. What could lead to such a demise? But I have another question. It seems to be the Christian countries that are being hardest hit. Yes. Europe. Mm. England in particular, Germany, yes. the United others as States. well, Italy not as bad as, as Germany, mm -hmm. France very bad, Spain very Spain. bad, but not as bad as Germany and not nearly as bad as the United Kingdom. Uh, Canada has a huge reduction, the United States is virtually wiped out, right? Yes. That's what the scenario is. Now, there are many conspiracy theories out there as to what the cause is going to be. Asteroids, mm -hmm. uh, Planet X, mm -hmm. um, collisions. But that doesn't explain the selective destruction in particularly Christian countries, if it were to come about in the first place. Yeah. Now, we have these statements which claim that national apostasy will lead to national ruin. ruin. Uh, the Bible says that the earth will wear out like a garment and its inhabitants will die like flies. Yes. So there is coming a massive destruction. Now, if you have a lot of light, are you not responsible for that light? Yes. And if you reject that light, then national ruin is the consequence. We will look at some of these issues. Alan White has a statement in education, yeah, education that every kingdom will, has had the opportunity to do God's will. And eventually, like for instance Babylon, yes. then the Medo-Persians, yes. all these great kingdoms, and they didn't live up to what they should. And eventually they were taken away. So maybe history can repeat itself for another nation, other nations that had this great light. Well, we will see. We will try and put this all together. It's a very scary thing to do. Now, Ronald Reagan at some stage said that uh, the world would surely unite if, it, uh, if there was an alien invasion. Yeah. His first speech was very speculative, but it became more and more forceful as he went along, right? Yes. Now, I also find it interesting that Ronald Reagan was very much into the occult world. He wouldn't make a move politically without consulting the astrologers, and there were communications that his wife had with entities and uh, political en people like um, Bill the Clintons had communication with spirit entities, etc. I couldn't help at one point in my discussions with, privately with 
General Secretary Gorbachev. When you stop to think that we're all God's children, wherever we may live in the world, I couldn't help but say to him, just think how easy his task and mine might be in these meetings that we held if suddenly there was a threat to this world from some other species from another planet uh, outside in the universe. We'd forget all the little local differences that we have between our countries and we would find out once and for all that we really are all human beings here on this earth together. Well, I don't suppose we can wait for some alien race to come down and threaten us, but I think that between us we can bring about that realization. Thank you all. God bless you all. Does the Bible speak of an outside intervention coming? The coming of Jesus. The coming of Jesus. Now, uh, the forces of evil in the spiritual realm, did they engage in a war against this outside force at some prior occasion? Yes. Yes. In heaven. The Bible tells us there was a war in heaven, right? And uh, the Spirit of Prophecy tells us that that was as much a physical war as any other war. It was a real war. Mm -hmm. Do you think he could be preparing for another war? Definitely. Would he want all the forces on his side to face this great threat? The Bible says he knows his time waxes short. Uh -huh. Now, some of the politicians deny that there are uh, alien forces or try to allay fears, but their, their own institutions don't, right? Mm. So let's have a look at some of these. These are very interesting. The federal government is being increasingly open about its decades-long investigation of UFOs. They have spent millions of dollars, and officials admit now they've seen many things they don't understand. We decided to ask the president about it. It was his semi-cryptic answer. Watch. You gave an interview the other day in which you said you've been briefed on unidentified flying objects. Are they, are they real? Uh, well, I don't want to really get into it too much, but personally, I tend to doubt it. Uh, I mean, you have people that swear by it, right? And pilots have come in and they said, and these are pilots that are not pilots that are into that particular world. But we have had people saying that they've seen things. Uh, I'm not a believer, but, you know, I guess anything's possible. We spoke to a government official recently who said the U.S. government had wreckage from a UFO in a, in a facility on an Air Force base. Are you familiar with I that? I haven't heard that, no. I haven't heard that. Uh, it has not been within government, has not been a big thing, but I've seen it. I've seen it on your show, but I've seen it. Uh, I don't assume it's correct, but, you know, I have an open mind, Tucker. <laughs> no, you do, Mr. President. Thank you for that. Nowadays, you can believe anything, right? <laughs> True. Well, much of the media have mocked the existence of unidentified flying objects. The U.S. Pentagon has been studying this subject for quite a long time and apparently will soon release some of its findings, which remain classified. According to a new report in The New York Times, the U.S. government may have physical evidence of, and we're quoting, off-world vehicles not made on this Earth. Huh. The government has also released footage of UFO sightings, including a 2004 encounter recorded from an advanced Navy fighter jet. This whole issue of uh, out-of-this-world vehicles that have been found. By the way, they were found in archaeological digs. Digs, yeah. Now, you know, we have this notion that uh, man has, was always primitive and we have reached the pinnacle of culture and science at the moment and we are the brilliant ones. The Bible talks of a far more brilliant race than we were namely the antediluvian world. And even the post-diluvian world, Noah and his sons, uh, they were brilliant, yes. huge in stature, great longevity. And there have been some very strange finds and there are interesting studies out there on hidden archaeology and technology that has been found that is amazing that we do not understand even 
There have been talks of uh, military discoveries. It's interesting that Adolf Hitler sent a huge archaeological team to Egypt, Egypt yes. during the war because yeah. he wanted to find some of these secrets, yes. right? And it was very important for him to procure uh, those secrets. Now, we still to this day don't know what happened to any of those secrets, if and should they have been discovered. We now heavily into Indeed. conspiracy <laughs> theories. Now, I used to be involved in occultism. I used to practice out-of-body experiences. This is part of my testimony. Mm. Uh, my father-in-law was one who brought out the magazine Inner Space for the New Age Movement. Uh, he, he was very fascinated by all of these things. And we were once sitting in a, in a restaurant in uh, the Cape, overlooking the ocean. Mm. And suddenly, two UFOs appears, appeared over the ocean. Now this restaurant had huge glass windows and everybody saw it. And we went and stood at the window and these two objects were playing, as it were, flying backwards and forwards, up and down. And I saw it with my own eyes. My wife was there as well. My father-in-law was there and the other people in the restaurant. I, of course, don't know who they were. And we watched this for a while. And then two Mirage jets were scrambled by the South African Defense Force and they rushed towards these flying objects. And these flying objects were playing the fool with them. And then they would, they would come and they would just go and They were much higher than the others. And the Mirage would have to make a long turn and come back and then they were over there and then they were over there. Eventually they gave up and they left. And the next moment those things took off. Now. Real? Well, I saw them. So that was pretty real. It wasn't an illusion because others saw them as well. Uh, it's interesting that uh, the UFO society people, they have many tales of communicating with the beings inside of these. And I also find it interesting that whenever there was contact of that kind of nature, there were certain spiritual manifestations. Yes. For example, people started speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. When they came into contact with them, this is now according to some of these witnesses, and in some of my previous lectures I spoke about these issues. Now, uh, they also wore emblems like the serpent with wings. Now, these are all biblical symbols. Mm -hmm. So, my current understanding and uh, those that have made the transition from the occult world to being Bible believers, many of them are of the same understanding, that we are dealing with outside forces, demonic forces. Yes. These are demonic manifestations. And uh, we had UFO experiences on the farm where I was living. And these were in the form of bright lights just shooting left and right and coming over your house and doing this and leaving burn marks in the field. Mm -hmm. uh, just as have been reported, I saw these things with my own eyes when I was deeply involved in the occult world. Now, of course, I know what the source is yes. and it is demonic. Now, if people claim that they've had communications with these beings, is it possible that uh, forces high up in the, in the government could have communications with these people? We're in, in deep conspiracy theories now, so we better be careful. But it's do you think possible, it's, possi yes. it's a possibility? I mean, there are literally hundreds of books written about mm. this kind of thing. And you read them and, you know, what is truth and what is fiction, it's very hard to tell. But by my own experience, I know these things are real and that they are spiritual manifestations. And uh, obviously these beings must have technologies available to them. Does God have technologies available to him? Yes. Yes, he can muster any force that he wants. Would they try to muster those forces, those same ones? Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Definitely. Now, let us continue. We read, even in, in very reputable uh, sources like Deutsche Wirtschaftsnachrichten, Bavaria, huge crop circle signs attracts hundreds of onlookers. And the Augsburger Allgemeine, it's a newspaper, reports that these crop circles have been forming in the region around the Ammersee for years, and it's noteworthy that there is an important earth station for communication satellites in the region, etc., etc. So, you know, these things are well known. Now, the Georgia Guidestones were placed there by mysterious individuals. Yes. And they, of course, had uh, an acronym. Yeah, the guy that went to the people to make the stones for them. Yes. His initials were interesting. R.C. Christian. Yes. And then at the Georgia Guidestones, it has the events that they foretell. And R.C. Christian then also has had placed there the writing Age of Reason. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to get to Revelation chapter 11 in this discussion because we have to bring all of this stuff to the Bible. Yes. And it's scary, but it's fascinating. That's it. And then we have to link it to our filter, the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, and we have to sift and see where we are and what all these things mean. Now, uh, the age of reason is something that has been coming for the while. It actually started in a, in a political way in the time of the French Revolution. Yes. Now, what does this reason bring about? Well, the first one was, of course, to maintain humanity at 500 million. That's half a billion people. That means that more <laughs> that almost the world population must be obliterated from the seven point something to eight billion, we must go down to half a billion. So where are all these people going to go? Uh, guide reproduction wisely. This is on the Georgia Guidestones. So guide reproduction. Who's going to take control of reproduction? The government. The government's going to take mm -hmm. control of reproduction. Now, when I was in the occult world, my father-in-law, who was, as I said, one of the first ones to bring in the New Age movement, and uh, he also introduced me, of course, to very high people in that uh, realm, like the channels of Africa. I mean, I spoke to them face to face. It's part of my testimonies. Uh, this becomes very, very interesting to lower the population and to guide reproduction wisely. And he was writing a book, I don't think he finished it before his death, and the book's name was Meritamia. Mm -hmm. Now, it was based on a system of merit. Meritamia. You could only reproduce if you fulfilled certain conditions. Okay. So if you were involved in anything like voting or something, you would have to have certain number of merit points okay. yeah. in order to do that. If you wanted to move around freely, mm -hmm. you had to have certain merit points. If you wanted to be able to reproduce, then something had to be unlocked or technology would have to take over in order to make you reproduce. Now this is years ago. Yeah. And I was steeped in this kind of thinking. Now, if you look at Chinese technology today, which is actually universal technology, do they have a point system? Yes. Absolutely, they have a point system. Point system. If you want to be able to travel, you have to have a certain number of points, yes. right? If you want to do this, you must... And with the coronavirus, they've got now the app. You've got the Absolutely. app, you have to scan your QR code, and then if you're green, you can go in the shop or whatever. So let's look at this very in your face, so-called conspiracy theory. Age of reason. Now, <laughs> the Jesuits, they are into reason. reason yeah. Remember we discussed uh, Richard M. Gula, 
reason informed by faith. Yes. And I still said, no, 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 it should be the other way around, right? Correct. They are the ones that say reason is the highest standard. That's the Jesuit thinking, mm -hmm. reason. We're going into an age of reason. The one who put it there is R.C. Christian, Roman Catholic Christian. What are the Jesuits? Roman Catholic Christians. Aha. Uh -huh. It's the Society of Jesus. So they want an age of reason. And then they want to unite humanity with a living new language. The Bible says Babylon spoke one language. They want to go back to Babylon. Mm -hmm. The Bible calls them Babylon. And we have to make sure that we come out of Babylon, have nothing to do with the system. Yes. It's going to get very hard. We are just <laughs> doing an introduction here. We're going to go quite deep yes. into this. Then you have to rule passion. You have to rule faith. Mm -hmm. uh, you could have you, to... Could you do that with an app? Yes. Could you do that with AI? Yes. Is it possible to control the genes that uh, produce faith centers? All very interesting. Tradition you have to rule and all things with tempered reason. Now, who are the ones who are going to do the reasoning For? in order to control those that don't want to be reasonable, oh, according yes. to them? So they're going to be the control freaks and you're going to be the controlled one. Protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. That's fascinating. I don't know whether they'll succeed. Let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court, so they want a world government. Avoid petty laws and useless officials. Balance personal rights and social duties, it seems like social justice is involved here. Prize truth, beauty, love, seek harmony with the infinite. But that mm. infinite is definitely not God. Not the God of the Bible. No, didn't he say be fruitful and multiply? Yes. These people say the opposite, right? Be not a cancer on the earth, leave room for nature. It sounds like uh, climate, change. climate change. Leave room for nature, they say it twice. twice. Avoid petty laws and useless officials, doesn't that also maybe pull in to defund the police? Oh yes, let's get rid of the police as well. I will put a link in on a documentary that uh, uh, that was made on the Georgia Guidestones. Very good. It's um, Dark Clouds Over Alberta. Okay. I'll put that in the links. That'll be nice. That'll be very nice. Here is a National Geographic article. New object beyond Pluto hints at mysterious planet X. The solar system's retinue of known faraway worlds has gained another member, a small icy body that takes 40,000 years to plod once around the sun. And then there are web pages which say that Planet X in some way or other will destroy the United States virtually. And they're, they're claiming that the United States will be divided into two there will be a major sea where the Mississippi is now joining up to the Great Lakes, Florida, and both coastlines will totally disappear. That means all the big cities on the coast will be gone. That's what they're saying. Yeah. There's and there's no evidence for such a planet X. Now, there's also been a few prophets, can we put it like that, that predicted a few things on this planet X. There's also a few other names for it. Now I'm wondering, if there's no truth to this, where do we find truth? On the Georgia Guidestones? Definitely not, right? Uh, so the only place I can find truth is in the Bible. Correct. Thy word is truth. Now, the Bible says what is going to happen to this world. And the Bible says what is going to happen to the Christian world when it reaches across the gulf to take the hand of Rome yes. and enact the system of reason over and above God's government and enact tradition laws over God's law, right? Correct. 
And once that decision has been made and once persecution in regard to that commences, God will intervene. And we read in Matthew 24 and in the spirit of prophecy that calamities will increase. Yes. That there will be calamities and destruction of cities. Does yes. it say that? Yes. And that the calamities and the destruction will bring people to say, let's implement laws Law. that are of a religious nature, Sunday law being particularly prominent. Yes. Does the devil know something that he wants to attribute to nature and to a so-called planet, planet X, X or to other so-called forces? Now, there have also been movies. Now, Hollywood, uh, well, I don't actually call it Hollywood. Yeah. I call it Jesuit, Jesuit theater, theater so that people can get the idea as to exactly what they are trying to do. And they're always trying to prepare people for what is yeah, coming. Right? They're desensitizing you most of the time. Like, yeah. for instance, the pandemic. Yeah. How many movies were there for, of the pandemic? So when it, when it, once it comes, okay. All right, the pandemic is now here. Let me quote the occult world directly. Now, Alice A. Bailey, 2025 hierarchy will manifest itself. Now this is interesting. Now Alice A. Bailey is basically the prophetess for the United Nations. Yes. She is the one that followed Blavatsky. Yes. Now when I was still involved in all of these things, I was pertinently told by one of the highest channels in the world, that if you are a student of Blavatsky, then you have arrived. Yes. Now, this is a personal experience. And uh, Alice A. Bailey, of course, Temple of Understanding and all of these things in the United Nations, they, they are schooled. The whole education system is schooled on Alice A. Bailey. Let's have a look at this quote. It comes from a book, The Externalization of the Hierarchy. But we must explain who the hierarchy is. Mm -hmm. The hierarchy are those spiritual master Masters. entities that run the world from behind the scenes. This is a reality in the thinking of the United Nations, right? Correct. Otherwise, they wouldn't have it as an official organization affiliated to the United Nations. Yes. And uh, this hierarchy if you know your Bible, is of course a demonic mm -hmm. hierarchy. These are demons communicating with humanity. Yes. This is what it is. Now, we can look at the publisher. It was written in 1957 and it's Lucis Trust, mm -hmm. which originally was Lucifer, Lucifer Publishing Company. But the name was too much in the face, so they changed it to Lucis Trust. Mm -hmm. Same thing. She writes, Thus a great and new movement is proceeding and a tremendously increased interplay and interaction is taking place. Interaction with whom? Yes. This will go on until... Oh. That's stunning! <laughs> AD 2025. During the years intervening between now and then, very great changes will be seen taking place. When was this written? written? 1957. 1957. This is interesting. Very great changes will be seen taking place. And at the great general assembly of the hierarchy. What's she talking about here? A meeting of the demonic forces. A meeting of the demonic forces held as usual every century. In 2025, the date in all probability will be set for the first stage of the externalization of the hierarchy. What does that mean? Don't where they will present themselves to humanity so that you can see them face to face. Does that sound like Satan 
masquerading as an angel of light, saying, I am the Christ, I have come back. Yes, I've changed the laws. Didn't we deal with that in the spirit of prophecy, that he will say, I have changed the laws? So must there have been an attempt to keep Sunday by that stage? Yes. Is he reinforcing it? Yes. Were there calamities that led people to believe these things? We're just putting it into a biblical scenario. Which countries would be hardest hit? Those that had? The light Protestant countries. And rejected it. Mm -hmm. National apostasy will be followed by? National ruin. Interesting. 2025. The date in all probability will be set for the first stage of the externalization of the hierarchy. The present cycle from now until that date. Is she making that date prominent? Yes. What was the date in Deagle? 2025. What was the date in that movie clip? 2025. Uh, who runs Hollywood? <laughs> Jesuits. Jesuit theater. Fascinating. The present cycle from now until that date is called technically the stage of the forerunner. Mm -hmm. Forerunner to whom? Satan. Satan. It is preparatory in nature, testing in its methods. Are we being tested right now as to how far we can be pushed? Yes, how far they can put the control on us. And intended to be revelatory in its techniques and results. You can see, therefore, that Chohans, masters, initiates, world disciples, disciples and aspirants affiliated with the hierarchy. Excuse me. According to the statement from Alice A. Bailey, an official part of the ruling powers of this world are the People in the world involved in this issue and people in the governments talking to these entities? Yes. So there's communication between the demonic world? Uh, could these demons be saying there's coming an intervention, we must prepare for it. Get your space wars ready. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're really talking conspiracies we now, are. right? So I hope that all the sensitive <laughs> People have tuned out <laughs> at this Put on the tin for lads. Yes. You can therefore see the chow hands, the masters, the initiates. So where would you find initiates? In secret societies. Aha. Uh -huh. hmm. What do they call a person who leads, let's say, a Masonic Lodge? A master. A grand master. A grand master, even a worshipful master. Not just the word, worshipful master. Jesus says, call no one master. master. And you shall worship the Lord thy God and him alone. And here this man is called worshipful, worshipful. master. Shouldn't that ring a bell in every mind out there that is associated with secret, secret societies? societies? Shouldn't they run for their lives? Shouldn't they flee from them knowing that this is a demonic organization if they even dare to use terminology like that? Yep. But they don't see it. Initiates, world disciples, disciples and aspirants affiliated with the hierarchy. Affiliated. That means... Joined together with demonic forces. Sitting at one table are all at this time passing through a cycle of great activity. She continues, Today human beings as a whole are so loudly invocative that the entire trend of the life of the hierarchy and its plans to date have been subjected to change. I'm glad God interferes every now and then. Yes. To postponement as far as certain interior and purely hierarchical determinations are concerned, and to a hastening of certain plans, which were slated, if I may use such a word, to take place several centuries later than this, but which, owing to the unexpected preparedness of humanity, can take place not prematurely really, 
but securely in the fullness of time. This is amazing. Of course, this is eyewash. Yeah. Satan knows the time frame exactly, but he's talking to his people as though, you know, this is going to go on forever. But because you are so beautifully brilliant, uh, I've listened to many of these communications and the way he speaks and uh, in the New Age movement, the Maitreya, my dear ones, my super intelligent ones, my this, my that, it's incredibly irritating. Well, the terminology of fullness of time is also... That I was just going to comment on. I'm glad you noticed that too, the fullness of time. He knows the time frame. Uh, we've talked about time frames and we certainly haven't made them long time frames. And yeah. uh, 2025 is well within those time frames. Now we're not saying 2025, this is a demon saying 2025. Correct. So the fullness of time as regards the particular planning with which we are dealing is from now until the year 2025. That's pretty definitive. Yeah. A brief period of time indeed, in which to see the consummation of the larger purpose of the planetary Logos. That's the word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is Satan taking the place it's of Jesus Christ. Yes, terrible. Unbelievable. Working through the three major centers within his body of manifestation. That's his disciples. Mm -hmm. That's the governments of the world. Now there are rumors in uh, the realms of, let's say, the king of mana, mana, the king of mana, who rules all the nations and has this pot of gold that he sits on to finance the nations, that every single leader, so they say in these pages, that every single leader somehow has to sign a contract with, with this Logos. That's very interesting. We're deep into conspiracy theories now, <laughs> but we're not actually in conspiracy theories because we're quoting directly yes. from the sources. Yes. And if someone doesn't want to believe these sources, that's their prerogative. Yeah. But the United Nations runs its schedule according, according to, to it. This. And the year 2025 is becoming ubiquitous. We're reading it here, we're reading it there. So, this purpose was threefold in nature. I've made this practical application and this immediate illustration of teaching anent glamour, illusion and maya because the whole world problem has reached a crisis today and because its clarification will be the outstanding theme of all progress. Now listen to this. Yep. Educational. Will we be re-educated? Is the Pope having a meeting very soon to tell us how to be re-educated? Yes. Do they have re-education camps? Ah. Uh, it's all sorts do, of interesting. Do the Jesuits in their articles tell us that we need re-education? Yes. Uh, particularly starting with the youth? Yes. Now, what about this uh, difficult elderly group? Would they perhaps have to just be eliminated to not rock the boat? Religious re-education, economic re-education. Are we seeing that at the moment? Great reset. Great reset. And it must be done by when? 2025. And we have just started scratching at the surface. This is the where, where are we going? What is their plan? How to re-educate humanity? What is their plan in terms of religious re-education? What is their plan in terms of the economic reset? Mm -hmm. Now, this all sounds like science fiction. We've talked about UFOs, we've talked about contact with extraterrestrials, we've talked about hierarchy, we've talked about the Logos, yeah. the false Christ, we've talked Planet about X. Planet X. I mean, so. it is ludicrous, people will say. Now he's gone totally insane. Or has he? 
We'll see. We'll see, right? Good. Just to round it off, let's just have a look at the quote from the Spirit of Prophecy. Manuscripts release number 614, Secret Societies and Confederacies. As we near the close of time, there will be greater and still greater external parade of heathen powers. What does that mean? <laughs> that, <laughs> that is interesting when you think of all this that you've just mentioned in the previous, with all these. Uh, what is an external parade? That's something that is visible. Showing up. Yeah. So, as we near the close of time, there will be greater and still greater external parade of heathen power. In other words, the demonic forces will manifest themselves. By when will this happen, according to Alice A. Bailey? By 2025. By 2025. All the heathen power, all the powers opposing God. Heathen deities? Yes. Mm -hmm will manifest their signal power and will exhibit themselves before the cities of the world and this delineation has already begun to be fulfilled. When did Spiritism start? In 1844. In 1844 there was the wrapping and the first communication started yes. taking place. 1844. From there on it has escalated into the mighty New Age movement. Yes. Who's behind that movement? Whenever you studied it, when you look at the Total Onslaught series that I made, you will find that it's the Jesuits who are largely in control of all of these movements. Yes. They have their agents in all of them. It is unbelievable. So exactly what we have been reading is predicted in the spirit of prophecy. Our filter. Correct. By a variety of images, the Lord Jesus represented to John the wicked character and seductive influence of those who have been distinguished for their persecution of God's people. Who are they? Who has been distinguished for their persecution of God's people? The Roman Catholic Church. Absolutely. Inquisition. Mm -hmm. How many Inquisition. millions of people were destroyed by them? So is Rome going to be involved in this? Yes. R.C. Christian, mm -hmm. bringing about an age of reason, reason, depopulation, mind control, control. government control, mm -hmm. reset economy. Reproduction control. Reproduction control religious control. All need wisdom mm. carefully to search out the mystery of iniquity that figures so largely in the winding up of this earth's history. Now, my dear young brother, what did we pray for before we started this discussion? For wisdom. We prayed for wisdom. How many need wisdom to search this out? All. Oh, is it therefore pure conspiracy theory to think about these things and to ponder how this fits into what is happening in the world? Or are we really onto something here where we can say, it's here. Mm -hmm. People out there, please wake up. Wake up, we're on the verge of the climax of history. We need to study these things. This is not a conspiracy. It's not fear-mongering. It's, it's a reality. Wake up and look what's going on. Absolutely. This terrible picture drawn by John, where? In the Revelation. To show how completely the powers of earth will give themselves over to evil. Mm -hmm. Powers of earth, is that a universal thing? Yes. Should show those who have received the truth how dangerous it is to link up with secret societies or to join themselves in any way with those who do not keep the commandments. My brother, if people don't wake up now, they will never wake up. We have said nothing in this, 
episode. We've just quoted. We've just quoted the background. Mm -hmm. Now, truth is stranger than fiction. We have opened to view the issues. And in the next episodes, we will go to the issues. It is absolutely unbelievable what is happening in this world today. Yes. And my prayer is that this will lead people to wake up and to understand this great controversy between good and evil. We need to understand where we are in this battle and we need to make a choice. Mm -hmm. And if we can expose this great evil, how the powers of earth will give themselves over to evil, if we can explain that the system that is being set up is evil to the core, then maybe people would rather choose the living God. Yes, and, and get hope. This is my Force. aim, this is our aim mm. in this project. Wake up, choose the living God. Don't go along with the system. And Absolutely. the Lord is coming soon. Amen. The hierarchy is telling them, telling us what their time frame is. Don't listen to voices that tell you that this is a long way off. It is at the door. May God give us wisdom as we discuss this further and see where the world is heading and what the real core of the decision is about. It's really about choosing between the character of Satan and the character of God. Let's pray. Will you pray for us? I will pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we live in such interesting but also dangerous times and we need your wisdom more than ever. So we ask that you bless us and help us with discernment, the Holy Spirit to help us and also that we can distinguish where we must go from here but that we always know that we have to put our full trust in you. Thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching this video. To subscribe, click here. When the bell appears, click again to get notifications. To watch the next video, click here. Thank you.